and welcome back to Home Build Help's Tip of the Week. This week, we want to answer a question from one of our viewers that writes, just how much are we supposed to tighten those flare nuts on our fuel, oil, and brake lines on our experimental aircraft? Good question. So is it really crucial that the tightness be just right? And the answer is yes, because the part that gets compressed on the flare, this material, can't be squeezed too hard or it will leak, or if you don't squeeze it hard enough, it will also leak. So leaks is what we're trying to avoid. And of course, if we over tighten too much, we also have the danger of cracking the aluminum, the nut, or the fitting underneath. So proper tightness is key to a reliable leak-free fitting, whether it's fuel, hydraulic for your brakes, or oil, maybe for an oil cooler. If you have been tightening these flared connections most of your life and have no problems, then this discussion is not for you. We are addressing those builders who are new to making a flared connection and would like some guidance as to what the proper torquing or tightening values are for this type of connection. Like most answers for questions about torque values, we generally turn to the FAA Circular 4313 Acceptable Methods, Techniques, and Practices to find a chart that gives us the correct values. But if things were only that simple... It turns out that we must understand what material we are using for the flare tube before we can use the charts. Each type of material requires a different torque value. That is because we are compressing the material in the flare for a seal. Different materials have different strengths. For example, let's say we are using aluminum tubing with our flared connection. Which type of aluminum tubing are you using? The two choices are 5052 tubing, which is used in certified aircraft. It is very rigid and hard to bend without a tool. Then there's 3003 aluminum tubing, the type we commonly use in our experimental aircraft. It is much softer and easy to form with your hands. This is the tubing that is supplied in aircraft kits by the manufacturer. Now, back to the charts in our FAA book 4313. We can see the torque values for aluminum tubing. However, this FAA book was meant for certified aircraft, so the values shown are for the harder 5052 aluminum variety. We don't have a column for our 3003 tubing, so these are not the correct numbers for the tubing we're using in our experimental aircraft. 3003 tubing has about half the strength of 5052, so what we can do is extrapolate and use the minimum column numbers as a guide for our maximum torque values for the 3003 tubing. Note that we simply run down the column and match the tubing size we are using to find the values. For example, dash 6, which is 3 8 inch tubing, requires a maximum torque of 110 inch pounds for our 3003 tubing. And for the other type of tubing used in certified aircraft, 5052, we have a range of 110 to 130 inch pounds. Now, what if your flare connection is not tubing at all, but rather a flex hose? The material used in these hoses is generally harder than the tubing we have been talking about, so we need to check with the manufacturer. For example, AeroQuip provides a chart that explains the torque to be used with their hoses. Here, a dash 6 hose connection needs a torque range of 150 to 195 inch-pounds. 
Note that these values are much higher than those used on our soft aluminum tubing. The aluminum alloy of the internal flared flange is much harder and needs more force to compress it for a leak-free seal. I suspect that other manufacturers that use the same type of aluminum fittings will also fall into these ranges. Let's look at using a torque wrench on these fittings to apply these values to properly tighten the connection. Here is the torque wrench we'll be using to tighten our flared nut. We set the adjustment here and this is calibrated in inch pounds and normally we use a socket to tighten a nut or bolt with a torque wrench but that's not going to work over a flare nut so instead we're going to have to replace this socket with a crow's foot now keep in mind one of the most important things when using a torque wrench is not to change the distance between the handle that you pull and the location of rotation right here. That distance has to remain the same in order to get an accurate torque reading. Here are two crow's foots. Now the difference between them is that this is more conventional. It more resembles a standard wrench. This one is especially made for flare nuts. Note that the grip around the nut is substantially more. In other words, I got one, two, three, four flats as opposed to just two. That's one way of looking at the grip strength. So this type is much less prone to stripping off our nuts than this one is. Generally, because we're using aluminum nuts and tubing in our aircraft, this will work just fine. When dealing with steel tubes where the torque is much greater, these become more important because the chance of stripping off our nuts becomes much greater with the higher torque. So either one, this is obviously preferred. Here's the crow's foot wrench I've added to the end. This will allow us, of course, to fit over our flare nut. However, notice that we have increased the distance between where we want to rotate the torque wrench and the location up here of where the nut's going to go. Effectively, we've added an inch from this point to here. So that's going to throw off our torque reading. Likewise, if we rotate it this way, now we have shortened the effective length of our torque wrench from where it was supposed to be here to down here. And that's also going to adversely affect our torque reading. So what we want to do is to turn this 90 degrees. It could be either in this location or over here in this location. What this does is keeps the length of the handle to the point of rotation as close as possible. Yes, it's off just a little bit to the side, but that adds an insignificant amount of length to the original point. In fact, that is so insignificant, it's within the margin of error of our reading. So to summarize, when taking a reading and using the torque wrench, be sure to rotate your crow's foot 90 degrees to the direction of the handle so that you keep the length from the handle up to the rotation point as close to original as possible. This would be wrong, that would add an inch and throw your measurements off. And this would be wrong because it would subtract an inch from the total length and throw your measurements off. 90 degrees it is at all times. We are ready to tighten our 
flare nut. We have our torque wrench prepared. It's been calibrated to the proper inch pounds as per the charts we talked about. And our crow's foot is on at 90 degrees to the handle. So we're going to insert the crow's foot and then we're going to rotate the wrench until it produces the audible click and feel once the proper torque has been reached. And there we go. And we can learn by the feel exactly how much pressure that took for it to reach its proper torque. And for more information like this on fuel-related components and procedures for your home-built aircraft, consider picking up a copy of our Fuel Plumbing DVD available on the Home Built Help website. And thanks all of you for watching and keep those letters and emails coming on in.